here since 2009. Um, I was one of the you know first trade pieces where you know the, the team signaled they're going to start rebuilding. Um, so I've been here. And in 2010, I was one of them said those comments. We deserve to get food. We deserve nobody to be here. But you know we've been building up for this season, and we're good. We have a good team. Uh, we haven't played our best ball in the first place. So it's been it's been years building up, really. And Thursday was the last drop for me. I just I had it on Thursday, and then yesterday was my first time to talk. Chris Perez strikes out the side, all three frozen at the dish. Drop progressive field in downtown Cleveland, another gorgeous sunny Sunday afternoon as the Indians wrap up a three-game series against the Miami Marlins. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. The Indians blanked the Marlins yesterday. Great starting effort from Jenmar Gomez and Chris Perez, a dominant ninth inning. But that was nothing compared to what happened after the ball game when Perez let loose on the fans. He's tired of getting booed, doesn't understand why the fans aren't coming out to support this team. And it sounded like a lot of frustration boiling over. Well, it is. He's been around long enough. He's seen enough baseball. He feels that the Indians are playing well enough now that, you know, you expect to see some people. There were almost 30,000 people out here yesterday. He's just a little frustrated. The Indians have played good baseball, but don't worry about it. He has to go out, save baseball games. Everything will take care of itself. The people will come if the Indians win. And, you know, if you know Chris Perez, he enjoys talking, and once he gets on a roll, watch out. But I'll tell you what, I, I don't blame the guy for saying what he feels. Well, you know, one thing about it, he never is, is shied away from being a lightning rod. I mean, he's put himself out there. He knows that when he goes out there, he, he was really particularly upset about the game uh, against Seattle where he walked two guys or had two guys on base. He hadn't given up a run, and he heard people booing him. Well, that's going to happen. That's all part of baseball. The best have been booed, so he, you know, get used to it. He better continue to win. Take a look at our pitching matchup today, another good one. All three in this series have been dynamite, and Derek Lowe, I don't think there's anybody pitching in baseball right now any better than him right now at well, this moment. the league leader in ERA, he uh, leads the league in ground balls. He's had a power sinker, and his, his defense loves to work behind him. So Derek Lowe is 3-0 in this ballpark, and he is off to a terrific start, and they love when he gets the rubber. He just grabs the ball, throws, and gets out. He will be matched up against Josh Johnson today, off to a slow start, but his pitch much better in his last couple of starts. We'll see what he he has for the Indians this afternoon. Nissan Road Ahead pitching matchup. Get to a Nissan dealer for great deals on innovation you can count on. So the Indians will try to take two out of three from the Marlins today, then an off day tomorrow, and then get ready as the Detroit Tigers come to town on Tuesday night. We're back with all the play-by-play -play action coming up next on Channel 3. Town Cleveland all ready to get underway. Indians Marlins putting the wraps on a three game series. Derek Lowe on the hill. Jose Reyes in the box. And the first pitch is inside ball one. You saw Ozzie Guillen, the Marlins manager, looking on. His club three and a half games off the pace in the NL East, currently in third place. A strike called evens the count. Indians lead Chicago.
by three and a half in the AL Central. The Tigers, after losing at home to Pittsburgh yesterday, dropped the four games back and then third place in the division. Two balls and a strike to count here for Reyes. Derek Lowe coming off a complete game shutout victory at Minnesota. In the air, left field, and that's a long run, and Damon won't get it. Short hops the wall. And into second base with a leadoff double is Jose Reyes. The starting lineup for the Marlins brought to you by Kia. Brian Peterson following Reyes, then Hanley Ramirez, who's had good success in his career against Lowe. Then Dobbs, Stanton, Morrison. Brett Hayes catching, batting seventh. Chris Coughlin just activated and is in uh, left field. And Donnie Murphy batting ninth. Derek Lowe making his uh, ninth start. A record of 6-1, and one, a league-leading 2.05 ERA. He's been brilliant in this ballpark, 3-0 and with an ERA just over 1. He's been great in his last five. Trying to bunt was Peterson. He jabbed at it, came up empty. And he has been a ground ball machine this year. That's why it was surprised me, the first hitter. Reyes ends up hitting the ball in the air and goes for a double. Now Derek Lowe has been on quite a roll. The 0-1. Peterson again tries to bunt it. Off the plate. Marson throws him out. One away. The sacrifice going two to three. And Reyes down to third with one out. Ozzy wants to get that, uh, for that first run in and play from in front. That ball goes right off the plate. Only chance Marson had, grab it and throw it to first base to get the out. But Reyes will move up. It was Marson that caught low in his last start in Minnesota in the shutout. Hanley Ramirez, the DH, will try to give Miami the early lead. And the Indians will play the infield back. And Ramirez has had a lot of success against Lowe, 14 out of 26. Yesterday, the Marlins only had one runner in scoring position the entire game. That's how good Jenmar Gomez in the bullpen was. Yeah, I guess after you get shut out, you want that first round on the board as soon as you can get it the following day. One ball, one strike. Jenmar Gomez now 16 scoreless innings under his belt consecutively. Slow chopper to second. That'll get the run home. Kipnis will throw out Ramirez. He gets his 27th RBI, and the Marlins take a 1-0 lead. Take a look at the Indians' defense brought to you by Pat O'Brien Chevrolet, saluting the men and women defending our country and watching on the Armed Forces Network. It'll be Damon and left, Brantley in center, Chu is in right, Lopez at third, Cabrera at short, Kipnis at second, Santana at first, and Lou Marson behind the plate. Chris Conroy behind the dish, Mark Carlson, Ed Hickox, the acting crew chief, Angel Hernandez. Greg Dobbs 0 for 7 in the series with the bases empty and two down. So how big is that run that the Marlins score here in the first inning? Consider that in four day games this year, Derek Lowe's ERA coming in was 0.89. Right back through second hit of the inning. Now, the one thing, low, he's still giving up more hits than innings pitch. He's a sinker ball pitcher. He works quickly. He gets the ground ball. He will give up his share of hits, but you hope they hit him at, you know, the players that are on that infield, and they will be ready. He's walked 17, only struck out 13. And a strike to Giancarlo Stanton. After the game yesterday, the Marlins making a roster move. They sent Gabby Sanchez back to AAA New Orleans. And they also put 
Emilio Bonifacio on the DL. He sprained that left thumb. He had been listed as day-to-day. He did that in the series opener, but they DL'd him. So they called up Chris Coughlin, the former rookie of the year from AAA. And they also called up infielder Donovan Solano. Stanton awaits the one-two. Way outside. Two balls, two strikes. Back out of play. Marlins jumping out to a 1-0 lead thanks to the leadoff double by Jose Reyes. They sacrificed him over. Got him home with a ground ball, and then the two-out base hit by Dobbs keeps the inning alive. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Marlins take the early lead. Indians coming to bat when we come back. Indian starting lineup brought to you by Progressive Insurance, proud to be the official auto insurance provider of the Cleveland Indians. Chu, Kipnis, and Cabrera at the top end. Chu riding a seven-game hitting streak. Then it's Hafner, Santana, and Brantley in the middle, followed by Johnny Damon, Jose Lopez, and Lou Marson. Josh Johnson on the mound for the fish today. He is one in three. A slow start. His first six starts got off to a slow start with an ERA over six. His last two he settled in. He's 1-0 and a 2.57. Has never faced the Indians before. So a big power pitcher. Foul back. You know, and last year his season was cut short. He had great shoulder inflammation, and he made just nine starts. But got off to a great start. Three and one was the pitcher of the month of April. Landed on the DL in May. And just never recouped. So now I think it's uh, not pitching last year is catching up to him now, but he'll get into the swing of things. You watch him the second half of the year. In those nine starts he had before he went down last year, his ERA was 164. Yeah. He was off to a tremendous start. And this has been their ace, and he's been very good in interleague play, 6-2 and two in his career. The 3-1. Missed inside. He walks the leadoff man. Let's uh, take a look at the Home Depot Marlins defense this afternoon. Coughlin and Love Peterson in center. Stanton is in right. Dobbs and Reyes on the left side of the infield. Murphy and Morrison on the right with Hayes behind the plate. More savings, more doing. That's the power of Home Depot. Going to bring up Jason Kipnis. 
He's just one for seven in the series. And foul back. Jason, a 263 average. He's driven in 24 runs on the year. In the air, left field. On the move, Coughlin. He's there to make the catch just inside the line, and back to first goes Chu, one away. Chris Coughlin, uh, I mentioned two years ago, was the National League Rookie of the Year. Three years ago, actually. And in each of the last two years, it's been knee problems. He, he missed two months of 2010 when he had uh, arthroscopic knee surgery, and then he missed two months last year with some tendonitis, some lingering issues. How many times do you see it? You may get off to a good start in your career, but staying healthy is the key for any athlete. Down low, ball one to his dribble, Cabrera. Cabrera one out of seven in the series, but that one, a big one last night with a home run. Runner goes, and the pitch up high. Good pitch to throw, and Chu beats the tag. Good jump by Chu. It was a close play, but he's able to steal it for his sixth successful steal of second base this year. Well, he gets that foot in there before they apply the tag. You see a pretty good jump by Chu, head straight down. The throw was to the shortstop side of the bag. If it's on the money, I think they have a chance, but it is not, and Chu goes in there safely. Meanwhile, a 2-0 count for Cabrera. And he rolls it foul. Two balls and a strike for his dribble. Now the 2-1. Back to the screen. He had a good pitch to hit. So far this year in the third game of a three-game series, the Indians have gone 6-2. and two. Three times those wins clinched a series victory. One against Seattle, the Angels, and the Rangers. Looking to do it again here against the Marlins now. The 2-2. Two -two. Turn, but no play at second. There you go. That's that's what I was talking about, where a guy goes back in feet first. Did you see how Ramirez had to jump over mm -hmm. the bag? And he didn't even have to slide there. Foul back. Brett Hayes doing the catching today. After John Buck caught the first two games of this series, he goes out to talk with Johnson, and that is a big man, 6'7". Josh Johnson. He's, yeah, Buck's a pretty big guy, and he, he dwarfs him out there on the mound. He was a first-year pick of the Marlins back in 02. Born in Minneapolis. Graduated from Jenks High School in Oklahoma in 02. Now the 2-2. Cabrera rung up on a pitch that he thought was outside, and that's out number two. Well, this had to be a perfect pitch because in that first time up with Chu, I thought it was like, uh, that's a perfect pitch. I thought he made some pretty good pitches to Chu, and Chu ended up walking. And now right there. Chris Conroy says, no, that's a good pitch. That ball had a little run on it, but it was right on the block part of the plate. Okay, so Travis Hafner will try to deliver with two outs. That's 
Hafner 0 for his last eight, three out of 15 on the homestand. And he takes a strike. Tying run in scoring position. The 0-1 to Pronk. Down in the dirt. You know, you look at the, the breakdown for Johnson. Right-handers have actually hit the ball better than lefties. 289 average for right-handers with two home runs compared to a... No, excuse me, the lefties 337. The 1-1. One, one. Right at the shortstop race. And Hafner is out number three. One complete. It's the Marlins one and the Indians nothing. Cherry Chiller, cherry and raspberry flavors blended with ice and 100% fruit juice. By AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. one nothing Marlins, second inning. Logan Morrison leading off for Miami. Brett Hayes, Chris Coughlin to follow. 2-0 the count. Morrison has gone 0 for 5 in the series. Two and one the count. Comes back to even it up. The 2 2 pitch. Bounced into the shift. Kipnis charges in and throws him out one away. Our league leaders brought to you by your Cleveland Akron area Lexus dealers. And in the American League earn run average department, Derek Lowe comes into today's game with a 205 ERA just ahead of Justin Verlander. Verlander will pitch Thursday in the series finale between the Indians and the Tigers. That's a 12 o'clock game. And we just learned before today's game that we will be televising Thursday's game between the Indians and the Tigers, 12 o'clock 
on Sports Time Ohio. Good news. Justin Masterson against Justin Verlander in that one. The game was not originally scheduled to be televised, but given everything that's uh, transpired here, Tribes in first place. Tigers obviously a big rival. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Masters I already see, got, he's already got yeah. the eye of the Tiger yeah. for that start. <laughs> well, he's going to be matched up against a guy coming off a one-hitter, so that's going to be fun to watch. One and two the count now on Brett Hayes. The Marlins' seven, eight, and nine hitters in yesterday's game went a combined 0 for 16. Well, only three hits in the game, so there's not many guys that... No chance to get them. And Hayes with a little swing and bunt. Infield single. I just thought it was ironic that the seven, eight, nine hitters today are completely different than the ones that were in there yesterday. With more on Indian starter Derek Lowe, let's go down and check in with Katie with him. Well, guys, Derek Lowe had a chance to get a replacement 2004 World Series ring just recently. He said the neat thing about it, when they were in Boston, he got a phone call Saturday before the game asking him to step outside the clubhouse. Now, he thought he was walking out to maybe do an interview with a reporter. He walked out, and all three Boston Red Sox owners were there with a World Series box in hand, and he said it actually meant Almost more to him getting that ring the second time around with just the way that they really went out of their way to give it to him. Just a cool experience, guys. Thanks, Katie. And Derek uh, lost a number of valuables in a robbery at his home while he was gone. Five, four, almost a three, but pulled Santana off the bag. Kipnis' throw was wide of the mark. So the inning stays alive. It's a little different target with Santana at yeah. first as opposed to Koshman. He's not no nearly question. as tall as Casey. And with the left-hander out there, he would have been able to just keep his foot on the bag and put the left hand up. Santana has to go up off the bag with the backhand, and he's just not big enough over there. You're right. I think if Koshman was there, it might have been, but uh, a little better throw by Jason Kipnis would have helped, but they do get the lead runner. Let's hope that uh, Lowe can come back and get Murphy now. Yeah. Casey Kochman has four inches. He's six four three. Four inches and then the, the glove hand as well. Yeah. Donnie Murphy is swing and a foul tip. 0 oh 2 the count. Yeah, Derek Lowe, you know, the, the neat thing about what the Red Sox owners did for him is he said, you know, they didn't have to do that which is why it meant so much to him that they went out of their way to get him a replacement World Series ring after the first one had been stolen. He gets out of the inning, and we'll head to the bottom of the second. one nothing Marlins.
second. Santana, Brantley, and Damon do up for the Indians. Carlos Santana, one out of eight in the series. And just four for 15 on this homestand. I'd be willing to bet, though, there'll be a lot of three-game series this year against the Marlins where guys come into the final game of the series one for seven, one for eight. Yeah. But they've got a pretty good These guys are legit on this They're pitching fifth, staff. They, they've got the fifth best starting staff in the National League, and the National League has some very good starters. When you look at the Philadelphia Ball Club and uh, that Washington Club, there's some, some really good teams over there. Santana looks at a strike. It's two and one. You've got the uh, Dodgers, San Francisco. And believe it or not, when you're looking at, at pitching, Pittsburgh has done a nice job early this year in pitching. And this guy might be the best pitcher on their staff, and he just hasn't gotten it going yet. He will. He will get it going. Wow. I'll tell you, he's got, a, he's got a small strike zone so far this afternoon that I've witnessed. Well, I just figured after he rung up Cabrera on that same pitch, See, that was a breaking ball. It was sort of like the backdoor slider. He yeah, caught a right. break. He caught a break. But he doesn't take advantage of it. Pops it into foul ground, and that's out number one. Injury report brought to you by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. What is going on in St. Louis? Lance Berkman left last night's game with a right knee injury. Just got off the DL. Well, he had the calf problem. They're dropping like flies. Is that the same? I wonder, is it the, the same knee as where he had the calf problem? No, right knee. Right knee he had the calf problem in his left leg. Oh, boy. Indians will visit St. Louis in June as part of interleague play. Yeah, we're in there, but June, what, 8th, 9th, 10th? Weekend series. Missed down and in. Brantley gets ahead, two and one. Bounced foul. Tigers and Pirates are scoreless in the second inning in Detroit. Reds, Yankees, no score in the second inning in New York. Mets out to a 3-0 lead over Toronto in the first at the Rogers Center. Fly ball to center, and Peterson has that two, uh, two away. That'll bring up Johnny Damon. Damon did not play yesterday. In the series opener Friday night, he was 0 for 1, but he walked three times in the game. Johnson just does shave the corner on the outside part of the plate. This will be his 30th pitch. Coming up right here, he's thrown 16 of his 29 four strikes. The 1-1. One, one. Fouled back. Lost the handle, did Damon. Johnny hearing it from Ozzie Guillen over there in the White Sox. Or White Sox. Marlins <laughs> dugout. Yeah, well, for years, yeah. that's true. It's easy to... And he's still wearing the White Sox colors almost. Take that splash of orange out of there. Ozzie Guillen never at a loss for words. The one two. Missed outside with it. Two balls, two strikes.
Two down on the base is empty in a 2 2 pitch. Rounded to third. Routine play for Dobbs. The Indians go 1 2 3. Two complete. It's the Marlins 1 and the Indians nothing. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller Time brought to you by Miller Lite. One nothing Miami third inning top of the order. Jose Reyes started it with a double his first time up. Yeah they sacrificed him over to third and a little ground ball got him home for the only run in the ball game. One wall, one strike. Chopper to second. Kipnis has a routine play. Fires over to get Reyes one down. Check in one more time with Katie Witham. Well, Matt, some of the best fireworks shows around happen right here at Progressive Field. You've got your chance to see back-to-back -back nights coming up on June 1st. We've got Pop Night, and then June 2nd, it's Country Music Night. You can log on to Indians.com forward slash fireworks to check out all those dates and get your tickets. Brian Peterson, a sacrifice bunt his first time up. Derek Lowe with a six and one start and a 205 ERA coming in. But as he told me in spring training, he, he knows that no one remembers what you do in the first two months of the season. It's how you finish that people remember. Yeah. And, and I think that's always in the back of his mind of how he finished last year in Atlanta. It is. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. And that is the truth. And, but he, he's also been around long enough, Matt, to know it, your job is to go out there and give your team an opportunity to win. And he has been uh, better than I think expected coming in here. Yeah, and you and I talked to a longtime scout who is a very well respected around baseball who's watched low. He said to us, I've seen him so many times, I, can, I see him in my sleep. And he said to us that what happened to him last year was he lost his sinker. And maybe it was because he was relying too much on the, uh, on the slider. slider that he just he lost the good heavy sink. When he gets on the side of the baseball, you lose the sink. You don't stay behind it. You don't get the good downward movement the last five feet. He's had that this year. And he said last before last start, I, I threw about five or six sliders. The rest were sinkers against Minnesota. What did he have, 21 ground ball outs? 
he's really back to being Derek Lowe again. And he, for whatever well, reason, he just got away from it get, last it's year. It's easy to get away from yourself out there. When you go out there and you're struggling and you're searching for something, sometimes you panic, you go to that slider, you forget to, to go with what got you there. And he has an awesome sinker. You dance with who brung you. Yeah. But he, not only between the lines has he done his job, he's done a good job with the other starters with Justin Masterson, Josh Tomlin. I think the guys that go in there, he's been great for just for these kids. And the kids have been good for him as yeah. well. I mean, it's been, it's been, he, it's, he's been reborn, you know, coming over to a young team. They may look up to him, but he also looks up to those guys in certain aspects of the game. Well, what's great about him is he can dish it out, but he knows how to take a good ribbing as well, and I think that's important. Up the middle. Cabrera, long range, can't get to it. Might have got a little leather on it, but Hanley Ramirez with a two-out single keeps the inning alive. Take a look at our trivia question brought to you by AT&T. Last four Indians pitchers to win an AL Earn run average title. And we will have the answers coming up later in the game. Here's the set and the pitch to Greg Dobbs, a swing and a miss. Missed outside with it. One ball, one strike. over to first, but Hanley Ramirez back safely. He does have six steals. Yeah, that's good to keep an eye on him with the two outs here. I don't really consider Dobbs a, a number four place hitter, and with two outs and a one nothing lead, Ozzie likes to run. He would send him in a situation. Dobbs drills one deep right center. That's going to split the gap. One hops the wall. Chu comes up with a long throw to the cutoff man. And no throw to the plate. Ramirez scores with a two-out RBI double by Dobbs, and it's a 2-0 Marlins lead. Looked like Chu just had a little trouble getting the handle on it when it came off the wall. And as we've seen, it only takes a slight bobble or slight hesitation to give that runner enough time to get well home. That was sort of a, a flat sinker that didn't really have the movement to it. He smokes it to right center field. So back-to-back -back hits with two outs. And the Marlins are coming up. They will lead it two to nothing here for Dobbs, his eighth RBI, his second double. Giancarlo Stanton struck out his first time up. Talking with Eduardo Perez, the Marlins hitting coach before the game today. He feels like the Marlins, the one thing they're missing in their lineup is that veteran hitter who can help the young hitters with presence and with just some tutoring on the side. Slowly chopped to third. Lopez throw on the money to get Stanton, and that ends the inning. Marlins get another run. Middle of the third. Miami 2, Cleveland nothing.
two to nothing. Jose Lopez will lead it off. And Josh Johnson with a first pitch strike. You don't want to give this big man too many runs. Spot him too many. Because he's been around the plate when he has missed. Well, as I said, the Indians haven't done much in offensively in this series. No, you're right. Seven hits yesterday. The uh, first game they didn't have, well, what, four hits? Or, yeah, four hits, seven, 11 hits. Fastball away, and it's two and two. Lopez has hit in six straight. Down low and a full count. Again, the hope is that uh, Jack Hanahan would be back and ready to go for the start of the Tigers series Tuesday night. We'll wait and see how that develops. But Lopez has done a nice job in his absence. Strikes out here, one down. Second strikeout for Josh Johnson today. Our minor league update presented by University Hospitals. Thomas Neal went three for five, drove in four, tripled, getting 343 in his last 10 games. Nice night. Lou Marson. I don't know what happened there, Lou. He didn't even see it. Is that what happened? Yeah, he, he hit it off the end of the bat. He thought he fouled it off. He didn't know where it went. It's a quick, easy out, two down. Well, when you don't play a whole lot and you're like Lou Mars and you're, and you're hitting ninth, you, you want to be aggressive and swing at that first pitch, but you don't want to give up easy outs. You see, he didn't know where the ball was at. By the time he picks it up, it is an easy out. One pitch, see you later. That's That doesn't help. And we go back to the top of the order. Shin Su Chu, the only man to reach so far today. He walked to start the game. But other than stealing second, the Indians couldn't m budge him. See, when you when you have a guy that hits in front of you and he goes down in that first pitch, you certainly, as the next hitter, want to go up and take a strike. And Chu took a fastball right there. Then he waves at a breaking ball in the dirt. It's 0-2. Fastball up high. Fights it off to stay alive. Boy, just missed with the fastball. And it's a two and two count. Ooh, that's a tough one to take. You can't hit it. That's why he took it. In the hole, it's by Reyes. And Shin Su Chu has the Indians' first hit of the game. He's reached twice now, and that snaps a string of eight straight set down by Johnson. Well, he really digs this one out, and it was an off speed pitch, a little slider. But you see that thing goes straight down, and Chu just kept his hands inside and fights it off, gets it under the glove. Ray is upset. He, he overdives for that ball, you know. You go as a, an infielder, you go to dive, and the ball goes underneath your, halfway up your arm because I don't think he would have been able to throw him out anyway if he catches it. Now Jason Kipnis flied to left his first time up. Chu had a pretty big lead, had to go back head first. Well, he stole a base back in the first, so he should have an idea of the move right now by Johnson. So he's going to pay a little more attention to him with two outs. And that's low, ball one to Jason. You know, being the big guy and being 6'6", six, six, you would figure... He would take a little more time, but he's not bad. He's average. He's about 1-3 to home plate. Now 
That's why you may pay a little more attention to the base runners or the guys that you feel may steal a base. Jason Kipnis is far from alone in this category, but he is one of a number of Indians hitters who has sizzled on the road and has Almost fizzled everybody. at home. He's and hitting 342 I mean, on the road, and he's below 200 at home. You can go up and down that whole list of players, and I think there's only one, maybe two, that have a better average at home than on the road. Swung out and missed one and two. For whatever reason, you can't figure it out. They relax, and I mean, I've, I've looked at those numbers, and I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. Carlos Santana is about the only right. guy who's hit better at home than he has on the road. Th that's it. Chew a little bit better. Is Drupal a little bit better? Kipnis bounces it in the hole. The second baseman, Murphy, kicked it, and he still recovers in time to get him as Johnson was there to take the throw. So the inning is over, and after three, it's Miami two, Cleveland nothing. Logan Morrison, Brett Hayes, Chris Coughlin for Miami. Morrison 0 for 1. Looks at a ball outside. Morrison 0 for 6 in the series. Hit hard, but Kipnis out there with the shift on, able to throw him out one away. Here's our stat of the game brought to you by your Northern Ohio GMC dealers. Indians closer Chris Perez, 13 out of 14 in save situations, 5 for 5 in one run saves, and 5 for 5 in two run saves. And, of course, he kicked up. Quite a stir after yesterday's game in which he probably had his most dominant effort of the season, striking out the side. All three were looking. And then afterwards he let loose, complaining about the lack of fan support and really more than that, complaining about getting booed here at home. And he said, you know, getting booed on opening day, I deserved that. I, I stunk. I was terrible. But he said, just because I get a couple of guys on base, now I hear people booing. And it doesn't help when there's only 5,000 people in the stands because you can hear every single one of them. Swung on and missed by Brett Hayes. The 
The comments by Perez were not lost uh, on the Indians organization. They made Perez available to the media today, as well as team president Mark Shapiro. First and foremost, Perez, when speaking to the reporters, he did not back off any of the statements that he made the day before. Hey, he's an emotional guy, you know, and he, he speaks, you know, he doesn't hold anything back. And, in, and if he feels that way, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, he says, hey, we're a first-place team. Enjoy this team now. Don't look at it, you know, all the negativity that's been surrounding this club or what people are looking at. He believes, though, they keep winning. People will start coming out. The weather's getting better. School's almost over. The 3-2. Right. Chop to third. Lopez. And a low throw. Santana's got it for out number two. Here is Chris Perez earlier today meeting with the media. Some of it's the fans. They want a winner. Uh, I think some of the ownerships in the city aren't accountable. Um, there's a lot of reasons. Um, the economy, I mean, I, I'm not stupid. I understand the economy is bad around here. I understand that. People can't afford to come to the game. I understand that. But there's just doesn't need to be the negativity. Like, I don't understand the negativity. Why? Like, enjoy what you have. You have a first place team. How many teams in, in the country would want that right now? How many? You think the Tigers, they're happy? They're in third place. They might think, oh, we, we can turn it on us, which it doesn't work that way. We're in first place. Enjoy it. We could be in last place. Could be the Royals. Could be the Pirates. Haven't won anything in 20 years. We're not. Enjoy it. I don't understand the negativity. Round of the third, Jose Lopez. Santana applies the tag, and the Miami Marlins go one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the four, two, nothing, Miami. Dribble Cabrera, Travis Afner, and Carlos Santana. Cabrera called out on strikes his first time up. Looks at ball one inside. Rick, uh, the thing that stands out to me, one of the things that stands out to me with the comments made by Chris Perez, the, the one thing in particular, he says, I don't understand the negativity and I think unless you're born here and spent a lot of time here, it is probably hard to understand where some of that comes from. But for those of us who have been around and endured so many of the, the heartaches, the, the being so <laughs> close a number of times, you, you have a sort of an understanding of where the genesis of that is. doesn't make it right, 
doesn't make it any easier well, for players to Well, not to somebody that's it. out here trying to do their best, who really cares, and right. do, he does want to win here. He wants to play here. It's not like he wants out of here. Right now, you know, he's voicing his opinion like, hey, man, we're doing everything we can possibly do. You know, it's your turn, too. You've got to show some faith, yep. you know, and, and they believe in themselves. Hey, I understand it from both sides. And, and, and I see his comment where he says, you're right, the negativity. It is a negative town here because they haven't won and they haven't proven they can win. And they don't win in back-to-back years. So that's where the negativity comes from. Yeah, it becomes almost a, an infestation of you, same old story. Well, here here we, go. we go again. Here, no, here you go. Here, second, second May in a row. You're you're in uh, you're in first place. Now they're going to lose again. Well, they, they they had injuries last year, and things happen. This could be a total different uh, May or June. You know, everybody. That's how it is here, and people think that way. They go, "Oh yeah, right." They're, well, they're in first now, but who cares? You, you can, know. and it's perfectly normal. For people to want to say, uh, you know, I, I'm not ready to commit. I'm going to withhold judgment until they get right. to a certain point in the season. And they will. And that's all understandable, and, and I get that. But as you pointed out, every season is different. Every season is its own story, and you don't know how it's going to end. You might think you do, but you really don't. That's true. And if you don't get on, you get in and enjoy the ups and downs of it, well, then it's that's, no fun. You see, that's the fun of it, the, <laughs> the ups and downs. Uh, that's exactly what he's talking about. And right now he's saying enjoy it while we're in first sure. place because there's going to be times where we're going to go down as every team does. But you know what? That's the part of baseball that people miss now. They just look at, and I think that's part of our own process here and our own fault because everything we look at are highlights. And everything you see is the best. The home runs that win the games, the guys that make the diving catches, the you know, all the little things like that. But you know what? You have good and you have bad. You got to fight your way through those bad spells to enjoy the good spells. You just don't jump on the, on the boat and say, "Well, we're winning. I love it. We're on a four-game winning streak." Enjoy that six-game losing streak. You can yell and boo, but that'll make you enjoy it more. Indians go one, two, three. We go to the fifth. It's still two nothing, Miami. Seventeen locations in Northeast Ohio, and by Levin's, home of the Sealy Posturepedic mattress, made right here in Northeast Ohio. Two nothing in favor of Miami. Derek Lowe has made sixty-three pitches through four innings. He's got ten ground ball outs, including the last six. He's so far he's been the same Derek Lowe we've seen all season long. A lot of ground ball well, outs, and uh, you're going to give us some hits. You're, what do you say in Boston? Shutouts. Give me seven early, and that's uh, that's yeah. the way to go. Well, today they haven't gotten him anything, and he's 
His job right now is to keep it at 2-0. Swing and a miss. Donnie Murphy. He fly to right his first time up. Down on the count now 1-2. and two. He tried to hold oh, up, but I think yes, he went. He did. Yes, he did, says first base ump Mark Carlson. Second strikeout for low, one down. Let's pause for station identification. You're watching Cleveland Indians baseball. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning with you. On a beautiful Sunday afternoon, it's, it's been a 2 nothing Miami lead. Tremendous weekend, hasn't it? Yeah. And the crowds have started to swell here yeah. at Progressive Field. Hope to see some folks turn out for the big series against the Tigers Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and then Thursday, 12 o'clock. Oh, I'm sure they will. They'll get ready for it. Let's go. Why not? First time we've had an opportunity to face the Tigers this year. They're our last uh, Central Division foe. You know, and the Indians playing better than they are this year. In the Central Division, the Indians with the best record, and that's what it usually takes if you want to win the Central Division. So it could be a great series. You know, the other thing, too, I was just thinking about this when we went to break. Chris Perez is not the first, nor will he be the last sports figure to come out and, and challenge the hometown crowd to get out and, and support the team and be there and be behind them. I remember... Back in 1992, when the uh, the Indians were just starting to kind of put the pieces together to get things turned around here. And I went over to Pittsburgh to do a story with what they had done in the late 80s and into the 90s w around their young players and how it sort right. of correlated to what the Indians were trying to do. You know, I remember with Bonds and Vance Lyke and Badia and that whole crew. And I remember the day I happened to go to Pittsburgh to interview Jim Leland about it, they had had a big controversial story where he had come out the night before and criticized the fans for not showing up. Now, this is a team that had Leland won two did. straight National League Eastern Division titles, was going for their third, and he had come out as the manager and said, you know, the, the excuse was, well, people didn't come out because it was 4th of July. And we had had a big crowd in Cleveland for the 4th of July game, and Leland's comment to the press was, what, they don't have firecrackers in Cleveland? <laughs> Is that right? So, I mean, again, this is not a unique story in and around pro sports. It's just anytime you challenge the fans, it makes headlines. Derek Lowe keeps getting ground ball outs. 2 nothing Marlins, middle of the fifth. For the Indians, Michael Brantley, Johnny Damon, Jose Lopez. 
Marlins starter Josh Johnson has made 61 pitches through four innings. And he has given up just one hit. Shinsu Chu, the only Indians batter to reach, he has walked and singled. Everybody else, Ofer. Brantley flied to center his first time up. Hit the ball well, but he hit it right at Peterson. Well, Johnson has moved the ball around beautifully today. Spotting it inside and outside with his fastball. A little two-seamer, a slider, and also a changeup. Tell you what, he's starting to get it back on track. This is his third start. Now that one may fall. Bloop to center. It's dropping, and it's in. And Michael Brantley gets a leadoff hit for the Indians. And we'll see if that can get him going here in the fifth. Well, first time they've had uh, their leadoff man aboard today. No, I take that back. Chu led off with a walk in the first inning. And was able to steal second base. But there you go, a little bloop. Get it started. Johnny Damon bounced to third his first time up. This year so far against Johnson with runners on. Opposition is hitting 392 off him. But today they've only had their one man, excuse me, the, the walk and then the single prior to this. And the Indians were 0 for 4. That's low and away. Two balls, no strikes. Brantley takes off. Call to strike throw is too high. And Michael Brantley has his fourth steal of the year. He's in scoring position with nobody out here in the fifth. Second stolen base of the day for the Indians. Brantley went in there and had a very good jump. Hayes behind the plate with the high throw. The first time with the Chew, it was not a bad throw. It was just on the shortstop side. But this one, he didn't have a chance to get Michael there. Michael with his fourth steal. And a 2-1 count for Damon. Waves at the pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Just missed. And a full count. I think Johnson wanted that pitch. Well, another close one that uh, goes. It might have been a little low. That's what they have to say. Now the payoff pitch. Pulled on the ground to first. He'll get the runner over to third. Well, and that's out number one. Right there you can tell he made a conscious effort to make sure he pulled that ball. Well, our second jersey giveaway of the year is Memorial Day. And the first 15,000 fans who are turnstiles get to see uh, the Tribe take on the Kansas City Royals at 4.05 and take home a replica jersey of Indian starter Justin Masterson. Log on to Indians.com for tickets today or you can call 216-420-HITS. Jose Lopez. Trying to get that run home from third now. The Marlins will concede that run. They're playing back on the infield. Well, Lopez, a strikeout victim, his first time up. Got to put the ball in play here. And he lines it into right field. A base hit. The Indians get on the board. Lopez with his seventh run batted in on the year. And for Jose, he is now hit in seven straight games. He did more than put it in play. He put a nice stroke on it. Stayed back, and you can tell he was not going to be out in front and try and pull anything. This is going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. Man on third, less than two outs, free at bat. Slider away. Stayed on it nicely and took it to right field. Will drive in his seventh run, and the Indians cut the lead in half. It is now 2-1.
Now Lou Marsha looks at a strike. Say we know how Lou loves to take the ball the other way. Donnie Murphy is shading towards second base and with the first baseman Morrison holding Lopez. He's got a pretty big hole to shoot for on the right side of that infield. Johnson 73 pitches on the day. 45 of those have been strikes. Out of play, one ball and two strikes. We want to send out a, a special shout out, a shout out to uh, Vincent Latoya out there at section 184. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Vince uh, took care of us today. He's he's the un, uh, the dog vendor out there. He's got the grilled the onions. He's got the grilled yeah, onions God, and I took care it. of it and sent it up to the booth. So, Vince, thanks, pal. If you come out to the ballpark, go see him. 184 section. Ask for Vince. 1-2 down low. Happy birthday wishes to Ed Zagantz in Westerville, Ohio, celebrating his 63rd birthday. And happy birthday to Allison Morgan, who's celebrating her 31st in Springfield, Oregon. She never misses a game. Now the 2 2. That a boy. So Marshall with a good AB here. He's got the count full. He's had five full counts this afternoon. Lopez at first held by Morrison. He takes off and it's low ball four. That is big for the Indians. Marson draws the walk. So two on one out for one of the hottest Indians hitters going Shinsu Chu who extended his hitting streak yep. to eight games with a base hit his last time up. Look at the manager get up and walk down. That was a really good at bat by Marson to hang in there. He was down in the count one two and ended up working a walk. You know, took a couple of close pitches. I don't know if Ozzie got up because of that. But uh, that pushes the tying run now into scoring position. Chu has had 10 plate appearances in the series. Six times he's reached safely. Four hits, two walks. Starting to find his offensive game now. Ground ball right to first. Morrison goes to second for one. That's all they'll get. And they're saying they're trying to argue that Marston went out of the baseline. Yeah. And they are. They're going to rover rule the second base umpire. He never even saw Call it a double play. And here comes Matty Acta charging out of the Indians dugout. The, the first base umpire, Mark Carlson, is the one who made the call on Marston saying that he went out of the baseline. He was definitely, you've got to be near the bag. But he didn't slide. You see, he didn't slide or, or try and take him out, and I think that's what Manny's arguing. You know, he didn't stop him from throwing a baseball. He was way out of the baseline. Maybe if he did go down early, that would have helped him. I don't know, and give him a, a pathway to throw. That's the only thing I'm, I'm thinking.
bucks five dollar discount coupons for the subway extreme fan zone to an upcoming home game it's the place to be for a chance to win subway gift cards indians fun money and get great discounts on your next subway purchase subway where winners eat all right so two one marlins lead now as we go to the sixth inning Hanley Ramirez, who singled and scored his last time up, leads off. Manny Acton went out and argued with Mark Carlson, who made the call that ended the inning. I think I think what he was saying was that Lou Marson interfered with the shortstop Reyes, but Reyes was never going to throw to first base. It, it didn't look like he had any intention to throw the ball. You're right. I'm not sure what the ruling is there. It looked like, uh, from my angle, the first time I saw that replay, it looked like Marson was thought that, that ball may be a, a base hit, and he was rounding. You know what I mean? He was out that far. Or he was just giving himself up. Well, you you know, a lot of times you up, see. If you go down, you've got to be able to touch the base if you're going into, into second base on a double play ball. Wherever you land, you have got to be able to reach the bag, and maybe that's what they're saying. But, I mean, he didn't even slide. That's what I'm saying. I've seen guys go down a second where they know they're out, and they'll take a right turn and go out towards right field just to get completely out of the way. Well, I just felt like Ramirez, he knew he wasn't going to get Chew at first base, so he was just going to hold on to the baseball. Or Reyes. Popped back by Ramirez into the seats. Three balls and two strikes to count on Hanley Ramirez. Leading off the sixth inning, Derek Lowe just over 80 pitches on the day. Pirates lead the Tigers one to nothing. Detroit has been held to one hit in the fifth in Detroit. Popped up foul near the dugout. Santana can't get to it. White Sox and Cubs now underway at Wrigley. No score in that game. And now Johnny Peralta has just homered for Detroit. And the Tigers and Pirates are tied at one in the fifth. Here's the payoff pitch. On the ground to short. As Dribble Cabrera will throw out Ramirez. One away. All right, here's how the inning ended. Let's take a look at it. High home, ground ball. You can see. Look at Marson. It looked like he went thinking you know, it was you're right. a base hit. He never looked back, and he must have just thought it was in the hole or something. No, I, I don't know. He was rounding second like it was going to be a base hit. You see the umpire, he's out. But now Reyes says, what are you doing? And see, the second base umpire, Ed Hickox, was saying, no, there's no interference, there's no problem. And the first base umpire came in and made the call. Well, and he did see him. He was way out of the line. He, he truly was. And didn't slide. I don't know if he thought it was going to be a base hit or what. Normally, you go down in there thinking it's going to be a double play ball when you see it on the ground and try and take out the, the shortstop. Maybe he thought there were two outs the way he was around in the bag. Very well could be. Do not know. Two and one the count. Well, the bad news is the Indians hadn't generated much offensively, and that was pretty good opportunity in that inning. They did get one run in. Well, you would have had first and third and two outs. Brantley on the move to the warning track. He pulls it in, two down. Our great clip of the game from yesterday, Jenmar Gomez, six and a third, scoreless. 
Only allowed three hits. He was dynamite and now 16 consecutive scoreless innings authored by Jen Mar Gomez. Great clips. It's going to be great. Here is Giancarlo Stanton 0 for 2. I mentioned earlier I was talking to Eduardo Perez, the Marlins hitting coach, and he said, you know, this is a kid right here, Stanton, who has all the skills, all the tools, and he said he's just learning. You know, and, and a lot of times you'll see pitchers get him to expand his strike zone, and that's part of the learning curve for a young player. But he, he told me because the one thing he's missing is that veteran guy in the lineup, maybe hitting behind him that can help him, give him some protection, and, and just talk to him as well. Well, yeah, tutor him, you know, um, along. That's that's true because when you have another hitter in that lineup or a player that can work with your younger players, it, it, it's more beneficial than a coach or anybody that can yeah. sit up there and talk to you because <laughs> players listen to other players, period. He, he said to me, he goes, you know, it's been five years since I played. None of these guys know who, who I am. They don't right. remember my career, remember, remember me as a player. No question. They may go look it up yeah. on the internet and see what you did, but or look at a baseball card. But yeah, they forget about you. Logan Morrison, couple of ground ball outs. He's hit right into that shift. And Jason Kipnis out there in the outfield grass has gobbled up a couple of hard hit balls off the bat of Morrison today, who was 0 for 7 in the series. I think he's done it really all series. He had three ground balls the second yesterday. Or excuse me, the first day. So three, he's five times, four, three. Sounds like me. <laughs> See the way low kind of spun around out of that delivery. Yeah. Well, he knew it. Yep. He just said, give me the ball back. That's all. He he knew what he did. He felt it. Jeremy Accardo is going to begin to get loose in the Indians' bullpen. As Derek is closing in on 100 pitches today, that's number 93, and he just walked Morrison. Well, that, you know what? And coming off his last start, which was a complete game, and he went uh, a number of pitches. What did he go? 120 almost. He went. Might have uh, been right at 120. 127. Yeah. He could be gassed right now after going uh, extended the extended that last start to get the shutout. You remember he had a longer eighth inning last time in Minnesota, and he had to battle his way through. So there you go. They're going to stall for some time. Now Radinsky comes out. He's going to want to slow everything down a little bit with two outs here in the sixth inning. While they chat, we'll take a look at our AT&T trivia question. A one, a two, and there it is. Four Indians pitchers to win the ERA title. Well, I know Kevin Millwood did it. And I remember El Tiante did it. Well, I, Rick Sutcliffe did it when I was here, and I, Cliff Lee did it. Boy, Cliff Lee, all right. That's right. 2008, Cy Young. Yeah, remember how good yeah. he was that year? I mean, I, Dynamite. Well, you remember Tiant in 68. How can you forget Lee in 08? That's, yeah. that's 40 years. I just remember Louis Tion's ERA was that was the last year before they lowered the pitcher's mound. I think his ERA was like one sixteen or some crazy thing like that. I gotta look at one twenty three, something like that. Gibson had the lowest one, I thought, maybe one thirteen over in the National League. Tion might have been about one four. Chopper to short. Go. Cabrera will go to first. And that'll end the inning. So six strong innings of work for Derek Lowe today. Indians down two to one.
Bottom of the sixth inning. It will be Kipnis, Cabrera, and Hafner for the Indians. Kipnis 0 for 2. He has grounded out and he has flied out. And takes a strike. Curveball hit in the hole. Morrison spins around, throws, and he gets him one away. This game recap brought to you by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. Marlins got a run in the first. An RBI ground out brought home Jose Reyes, who had doubled. Then in the third, Greg Dobbs with two outs. Doubled to right center, scoring Hanley Ramirez. Indians got on the board with a RBI hit by Jose Lopez in the fifth, but it's 2-1 to one Marlins. Find out about more than 30 Toyota offers available now at buyatoyota.com. And it's Dribble Cabrera. 0 oh for 2, he has struck out twice, just 1 for 9 in the series. Johnson just over 80 pitches on the day. Wide of the mark, two and two. His high water mark of the season, 107 pitches, and that was his third start of the year. Routine bouncer to second. Donnie Murphy throws him out two away. Back to the Hyundai Studios we go for an in-game update with Dave Chodowski. Hey, Matt, thanks a lot. The Tigers are next for the Tribe today, taking on the Pirates' top of five. Rod Barajas off Max Scherzer. That's gone to make it 1-0. But in the bottom of half, Johnny Peralta goes the other way. That's a solo shot. We're tied at one in the sixth inning. Back to you. All right, thanks. And I think that... The Pirates have just regained the lead almost as quickly as Dave sent it back to us. A home run by Neil Walker. Two to one, Buckos. The 1-1. One, one. After doesn't like the call, and it's a strike, one and two. After winds it the other way. Foul. That ball certainly started in fair territory, but you can see the slice on it and missed by a couple of feet as it bounces into the seats. So half will come back and get one more crack at it. And he strikes him out. Josh Johnson sets him down one, two, three in the sixth, and it remains 2 1 Miami.
you have to bring your family out here. There's so many different activities to do. If you need tickets, you can check out those Key Bank Grand Slam four pack, four tickets, food, parking, and four Indians caps, or those flex packs are still available. You can get 10 tickets, use them however you want, whenever you want. It's all online right now at Indians.com. Matt Rick will send it back to you guys. All right, thanks, Katie. Seventh inning. And the Indians go to the bullpen for the first time today. Nick Hagedon will come on for Derek Lowe. The big left-hander making his 12th appearance. He has punched out 12, walked just four in 11 and two-thirds. He'll face the 8-9 and one hitters for the Marlins. Derek Lowe uh, in his six innings, 14 ground ball outs. Again, he utilized his infield. Kipnis, five assists. Lopez had five. Cabrera had two. Chris Coughlin will lead off the seventh inning for the Marlins. Just called up after the Marlins made some roster moves after last night's game. 0 for 2 today. Coughlin, the rookie of the year for the Marlins back in 2009, and he became the third Marlin to win that award. The first was Dontrell Willis in 2003, and current teammate Hanley Ramirez won it in 06. But as I mentioned earlier, injuries since then have really derailed his career. Checked, and it was very close, but one and two to count. Well, as many have, many have been today from, from every pitcher right off the dish. This guy, Chris Conroy, has got, I, I would think, more of a hitter's zone than a pitcher's zone. Swing and a miss. He got him with a breaking ball. One away. Comes the slider from uh, Nick Hagadon. There you go. That one didn't miss. That was right on target. Gets a swing and miss for out number one. Fastball strike. Here's CO2 pitch. And a ground ball to short. Cabrera goes to the backhand and throws him out two away. Indians Minor League Magazine returns Tuesday night at 6. Al and Jason will bring you the latest updates from down on the farm. Tuesday, you'll meet Akron pitcher TJ House. Indians Minor League Magazine, it's Tuesday at 6 on STO. Two down for Jose Reyes, one for three. He doubled and scored in the first. Reyes switch hitting shortstop. Back out of play. Normally, the Marlins have been a team that has been at or near the bottom of payroll year in and year out. Right. But they go into the new stadium this year, and they went out and made some headlines in the offseason going after Reyes. I mean, there were talks, yeah, uh, there were talks that Burley. they were looking at Pujols at yeah. one point. Well, Pujols did. I, he talked to yeah. him. Or, or, and then uh, how about Fielder? But they ended up getting Mark Burley. They went out and signed the closer, Heat Bell. They they did. They spent some money. Good bunt by Reyes. Bare hand grab by Lopez. No play. He'll just put it in his pocket. And a two-out single. Well, that doesn't surprise me with this guy because he will bunt at any time. 
And with Lopez playing back, uh, he did. He bunted it. Look, see how deep he is? I would think you'd have to be up even with the bag with this guy, even with two outs. But uh, he dropped one down. He will be on. Now I, I would look for him to, to run. You got Peterson, the left-hander, up there now. If you're going to bunt with two outs, this guy's definitely a base-stealing threat. Peterson is over 2 with a sacrifice bunt. And Hagedon, fastball just a bit high. Missed away. Marson's going to go out for a chat. Yeah, he's, you know, trying to get that ball to Marson, maybe rushing a little bit because of Reyes on first base. Take your time. Deliver the pitch. Get this hitter. You have two outs. Peterson just two hits and 13 at bats with the Marlins. Gary Thurman, who spent a number of years in the Indians player development system, coaching at first base for Ozzie Guillen's Marlins. Hagedon sets now the 2-0. Runner goes. Strike called. Throw down not even close. Yeah. See, it's just a matter of time. He had to take off. Reyes has some exceptional speed. His 11th stolen base of the year. Now he's only nine behind team leader Emilio Bonifacio. Well, he delivered the fastball. Marson, he would have stole that even with a good throw. Oh, yeah. Now a 2-1 count for Peterson. I don't understand that. I don't either. A 2-1 count, you're showing him in. bunt. You want to be looking for something to hit in that count. Yeah, especially, yeah, you're looking for his fastball. Absolutely. Boy, especially the lefty on lefty, man. You're going to get that fastball. You don't take it. You should get after it. Let's see if Hagedon can put him away now. With a runner at second and two down. The 2-2. Two -two. Missed with a heater. Full count. You just as soon not have to face Handley Ramirez in this situation. Well, you got to go at him. You got to throw a strike here. Plain and simple. You can't walk him. And he did. Up and in. So he will have to deal with Ramirez with two down. And runners at first and second. All of this started with a two out bunt by Reyes. And they're going to get the bullpen up again. Looks like it might be a Cardo once again who gets up. Two odd, two out. And the Ramirez one for three with a single and a run batted in. He has also scored a run. Three hits in the series.
Two on, two out on one count on Hanley Ramirez. Popped him straight up. The first baseman Santana can't see it. Marson tries to recover, and he does. Oh, wow. baby, what a heads-up play by Lou Marson Great save. to end the inning. Putting a little adventure back into the old pop-up play. Stretch time in Cleveland, 2-1 Marlins. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by the... camera as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Stop by Panini's and get overstuffed. Miami 2, Cleveland 1. It will be Carlos Santana, Michael Brantley, and Johnny Damon coming to the plate here in the home half of the seventh. Josh Johnson today, 16 of 22 first pitch strikes. Total contrast, the uh, opposite side of what happened here on Friday night with uh, Carlos Zambrano, who still pitched uh, a whale of a game, but he had 15 2 0 counts. Speaking of strikes, that game in Detroit where the Pirates lead the Tigers 2 to 1, Max Scherzer of Detroit has struck out 15 Pirates hitters in six and a third innings. Wow, that's a, out of the 18 outs or yeah, 19 outs? Huh. And they're, they're beating him. <laughs> I guess all it takes is a couple of Well, you can solos. make one pitch, and one yeah. pitch can cost you a ball game. Carlos Santana checks it well, down low. Right now, Carlos Santana was saved by Lou Marson in last inning because he lost that ball up in the sky with glasses on at first base, and Marson had to go to the middle of the diamond to make a catch. Carlos Santana delivers a leadoff line drive single to right field, and the Indians have the tying run aboard to start the home half of the seventh. 
Well, Santana, good fastball hitter, and he gets himself a fastball right there, up belt high, and jumps on it. Might have been a little two seamer, but that was up in the strike zone. Santana takes advantage of it. Michael Brantley singled and scored the only run of the game for the Indians in the fifth. Fastball in on the corner, says Mark uh, Chris Conroy, and that's a called strike. Ninety fifth pitch of the day right here for Josh Johnson. He went in, then he goes out, and he's got two quick strikes on Brantley. And I mean on the corners both times. This guy has made some really good pitches today, Matt. I mean, he's been corner to corner. And if he didn't hit it, he's been just off of it. He stayed out of the middle of the plate. You yes, he has. That last pitch to Santana was one of the few rarities in the middle. Brantley drives one to right. Stanton makes the catch. He fires back to first, but it's not in time. One away. Let's pause once again for station identification. You're watching Cleveland Indians baseball. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning with you. Johnny Damon will step in with the runner at first and one out. He's 0 for 2 today. High fly ball, right field. Back is Stanton on the track and makes the catch at the base of the wall. And Damon was about a step away from first base and just went into a deep crouch and smacked his hands together. So close, but came up short, two down. Well, he got himself a high fast ball as well. And, uh, boy... Another bowl of cereal in the morning, and it might have done it. On the track, out number two. Jose Lopez with an RBI single his last time up. This probably will be the last inning for Johnson. He's closing in on 100 pitches. Now at 97. Activity in the Marlins bullpen. Lopez, line drive, base hit, left field. It's going to get by Coughlin. He makes a nice play off the wall, and Santana will have to stop at third. If he misplays that ball coming back off the wall, then the Indians probably tie the game. But Lopez put a charge into it, his second hit of the day. And that double has Indians at second and third with two down now. Boy, he hit that ball right on the nose. I mean, he put a great swing on it. It just got to the wall too quickly. Santana was off, and I mean, he was running as fast as he could. Coglin plays it perfectly. Got it right off the first hop. They get it in. No chance for Santana to score. So that's, uh, you know, nothing you could do right there. It's a good hit by Lopez. Second and third and two outs. That'll bring up Marson, and out comes the pitching coach. Randy St. Clair out to talk with Josh Johnson, but left-hander Randy Choate has just started to warm up in the Marlins' bullpen. Yeah, he's going to bring Casey Kochman out of that dugout now for Marson, and it makes sense because they just got the left-hander up. So they've got, he's got a, Johnson's got to face whoever comes up to the plate. He wasn't ready, so it's going to be Kochman. Lou Marson 0 for 1 with a walk. So Casey Kochman will get a chance here to potentially put the Indians on top in this game. Kochman this year, a 2-11 hitter. Three homers, 13 runs batted in. 
but he has definitely swung the bat much better here of late. Casey has hit in three straight games, four for his last 11. But even going back before that, his last 16 games, he's batted over 300 with four doubles and nine runs batted in. First pinch hit appearance of the year. Well, you know, he's pinch hitters this year, 0 4 5. Yeah, he's primarily been an everyday guy. He hasn't been on the bench much. Well, he needs one good swing here. And it's low ball one. And you know you're going to get a good at bat from Kochman because he's got a good eye. He'll be patient. He has, uh, he's uh, two for three off Josh Johnson as well. So he's hit him before. One good swing here, and the Indians could have the lead. It's outside 2-0. and oh. You got Chu on deck right back to the top of the lineup, and maybe that's what Choate's up ready for. Now he's right at 100 pitches, as you see there, 63% for strikes. I don't miss my bet, though. He's going to go at Koshman here. Missed. It's 3-0. and I, I, And the reason I say that is because if you're Josh Johnson, you've pitched this well all day long. You don't want to leave it in the hands of the bullpen now. You want to try to get this last out yourself. But he, he's trying to get it. He just he's being maybe a little too fine yeah. here. And now he's 3-0. and Casey. Got to figure he's in the take situation. Just did catch the outside corner. 3-1. and one. Well, that's all right. He's still got two, two to go. Two big ones left. Two on, two out. Santana the tying run at third. Lopez the go-ahead run at second. And time called once again. Cat and mouse back and forth here. Now well, see if Kochman gets something away. Look away, maybe take it that way. Spin on anything else. Boy, he challenged him too. Came right at him with a fastball. I don't. Let's see. That might have been a changeup. I don't know. It registered 87. I don't know. This changeup I thought was slower than that. That might have been a two-seamer, if anything. Here's the set and the payoff pitch. Bounce to third. And a short hop play made by Dobbs. He'll throw him out. And Johnson gets out of trouble. The Indians strand a pair. We go to the eighth. 2-1 Miami.
not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. It's a 2-1 to one Miami lead in the eighth inning. And we've got changes to tell you about for the Indians. Casey Kochman stays on. He's now at first base. And Carlos Santana goes back behind home plate, taking over for Lou Marson. Nick Hagenon will stay on to work the eighth. He Yeah, time to get the sunglasses. Yeah, for Casey Kochman. Kochman wanted the sunglasses. No doubt. After what happened to Santana at the end of last inning, he better have the glasses out. That sun has been out all day. Greg Dobbs with a clutch two out RBI double in the third inning. It gave the Marlins their second run in this game and that's the difference right now. Dobbs came in 0 for 7 in the series. But he singled in the first and doubled in the third. Three and one to count. That's hit well, right field. That'll go up against the fence. Knobs on his way to second. Here's the throw offline. His third hit of the game. He was 0 for the series. And now 3 for 4 today. It's a fastball up in the zone. There you'll see it middle in and he didn't miss it. He put a charge into it down in the corner. So the leadoff man aboard and insurance run out comes Manny Acker. So we've got a timeout here at Progressive Field. Jeremy Accardo will be coming on, I believe, when we come back.
Our box score brought to you by your Northern Ohio Hyundai dealers who invite you to come see the 2012 Sonata. Visit NorthernOhioHyundaiDealers.com today. Greg Dobbs just doubled for his third hit today. Jose Reyes doubled to start the game and scored the first run for the Marlins. But, uh, you know, Derek Lowe went six innings, two runs on six hits. Did a nice job. Nick Hagenon gives up the double to start the eighth after working a scoreless seventh, and now Jeremy Iacardo on for the well, third this time. This will be a very big run out there for the Marlins. That leadoff double late in the game. They're going to try and add one more, see if the Indians can keep it a two-to-one game. Giancarlo Stanton one for three today, two for nine in the series. And that's outside 2-0. and Three balls, no strikes. And Accardo walks Stanton on four pitches. Two on, nobody out. Logan Morrison, 0 for 2 with a walk, coming to the plate. Pirates, Tigers tied 2 2 there in the bottom of the seventh in Detroit. Kansas City scoreless at home against Arizona there in the fourth inning. White Sox lead the Cubs 1 to nothing. In the fourth inning at Wrigley. Minnesota getting pounded by Milwaukee 8-1 there in the third at Miller Park. Minnesota trying to run their win streak to five in a row, but down seven to the Brewers. Two on, nobody out. They can't put the shift on like they normally have had most of the series now that they have first and second. So Cabrera stays on the shortstop side. And Lopez much closer to third base than he has been. Tigers have now gone ahead of Pittsburgh 4-2. to two. Alex Avila with a two-run single. In the air, left field. Damon, a long run. Still going back on the track at the wall. Can't make the catch, and he went into the wall hard and goes down in a heap. A run will score. Second and third for the Marlins. They now lead it 3-1 to one as Morrison picks up his 10th RBI on the year. Boy, he, this ball had pretty good carry to it. Damon going all the way. He runs face first into that wall. He wasn't going to get there. That ball went up above about seven feet off the wall. As he goes up, can't get there. And he goes to the ground. They score a run at second, third. Still nobody out. Second double in the inning. Now the infield in. Cut of the grass all the way around. That run belongs to Hagedon. Brett Hayes, one for three, takes a strike. Hard ground ball, base hit. That's going to bring home Stanton. Morrison stops at third. So Jeremy Accardo roughed up here today. He has not retired a batter. And it's now a 4-1 Miami lead. Infield in by Cabrera. 
So both base runners move up. It's now first and third. And the first four in this eighth inning have reached for the Marlins. They have two across. They now have ten hits. And it's a four-to-one ball game. And a chance to add to it. Chris Coglin, 0 for 3. Weekly tap towards second. Kipnis will get the lead runner there, but scoring is Morrison. So a three-run eighth for the Marlins, and they now lead it 5-1. to one. So one on, one out, and Donnie Murphy over 3 will be coming to the plate. Runner goes. Ball hit to right field. Chu will make the catch. He'll fire back to first. Not in time. Coglin did a good job of putting on the brakes and retreating in a hurry. You know what? He picked up the baseball, and that's what you do on a hit and run. Watch him look back in. There he sees. Now he puts the brakes on. He picks up the baseball. He sees Chu's going to catch it, and you better hustle to get back. And he goes in head first, and he does. He beats it. Well, that's a, that's a good job of base running, getting back on the hit and run play. Runner goes, throw down, got him. Carlos Santana throws out another would-be base stealer, and the inning is over. But the Marlins blow it open with a three spot. Our second bobblehead giveaway of the season is going to take place Sunday, June 3rd at 3.05. And the first 15,000 fans will take home a Carlos Bayerga bobblehead. That is presented by Medical Mutual. And buy your tickets early. Save on the seats. 216-420 hits. Sunday, June 3rd against the Twins. Left-hander Randy Choke coming on for the 20th time this year. 
079 ERA and 11 and a 30 has struck out 13. This is what the 28th time now a team has brought in a left hander for the first one out of the pen to face the Indians out of their 41 games now. This 35 year old left hander made his big league debut with the Yankees back in 2000. Pitched in the World Series in that fantastic fall classic between the Yankees and Arizona back in 01. Ironically, after pitching in that World Series for the Yankees against the Diamondbacks, the next team he pitched for in his big league career was Arizona. Spent several years with the D backs. And then. Went to the Tampa Bay Rays in 09. Also pitched there in 2010 when they made it to the postseason. Last year went to Florida. Had a fantastic season. I mean, in 54 games, he had an ERA of 182. But interesting in that in those 54 games, he only pitched 24 and two thirds innings. Matchup left hander. Come on in and get a couple of left handers out. Every team needs them. He walks the leadoff man. Shinsu Chu aboard. Our Ford highlight reel brought to you by your Northeast Ohio Ford dealers. And you got to give he credit to this guy. He, he, he kept the ball in all four quadrants of the strike zone. Got great stuff. And then had impeccable command when he needed it. So you what? Paint the corners. Yeah, you time. watch this guy. Down the road, he's uh, this is third straight game where he's pitched well, and uh, he missed most of last year. So, I'll tell you what, the uh, the Marlins have very good starting pitching. And in their division, you're certainly going to need it to go along with Washington, Atlanta, Philadelphia, and the surprising Mets. Now there's time out. Is that Ozzy taking a stroll out? Yeah. I think Maybe he, he wants to talk to him. He was looking out of the bullpen as if he was going to make a move right there. But yeah, he must be going out and having his little conversation with Choate. That's all. Just a little quick pep talk. He wanted to deliver the message instead of sending his pitching coach. Now Miami came into the game fourth in starting pitching with a 3.29 ERA, and their bullpen right there in the middle of the pack with a 3.62 ERA in the National League. If their young hitters start getting it going, they could be trouble in the NL. And a double play. 3-6-3 on the twin killer as Jason Kipnis has had a tough series. Now one for 11. Well, it's hit right on the nose, and Chu does the right thing. You never know. You're taking off to go to second base, but you think the guy might step on first and throw it back. So you take a few steps and stop, but that, that's not the case. He went straight through, and an easy 3-6-3 double play. And as Dribble Cabrera 0 for 3 today steps in, 1 for 10 in the series. Randy Choate fires a strike. And I think Cabrera, yeah, he did get hit. So Cabrera will take his base. Rick, the interesting thing in the NL East, we're talking about the Marlins and where they're at, is the team that everybody was focused on before the season began is Philadelphia. If they get healthy, if they get their guys that they're counting on back in that lineup, they're only four games out even though they're in oh, last yeah. place. So they still are probably the team beat in that division. 
Well, they've got the good starters, but if they get any offense, the Philadelphia Phillies will be there in the long run. Remember, we're just a quarter away into the season. You can see the standings in the National League East. Atlanta playing very good. Washington surprisingly up there because of their starting pitching. Speaking of pitching, and then the Miami there, everybody's over 500 in that division. So it'll shake, it, uh, shake itself out. Travis Hafner, 0 for the series. And a foul back. Hafner last homered four days ago against Seattle. He's hit four solo homers, one two run shot. Takes a strike to even the count. Of his five home runs, two have come against left handed pitching. Two down on a 2 2 count with a runner at first here in the bottom of the eighth. And he strikes him out. We will go to the ninth here in Cleveland. And the Marlins lead it 5 to 1. Indians go back to their bullpen here in the ninth, and Jairo Asensio will come on. And he'll be facing the top of the order for Miami. Jose Reyes, two for four with a single and a double today. And now three for 11 in the series. Ground ball to second. Kipnis throws him out one away.
And as promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. Derek Lowe with six innings of six-hit baseball. He did allow two runs, but you know, another solid performance for D. Lowe. Yeah, he was he was on his game. Typical Derek Lowe outing. Give me the ground balls. Let my infielders work. He just didn't get the run support today. Stick around after the ball game for the Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care Post Game Show. It comes your way on Sports Time Ohio. 1-1 one, one, foul, first base side. Iro Asensio nods in agreement. The one two. Squib foul the other way. For those of you watching on Channel 3 looking for Stanley Cup hockey, it's coming up after the ball game here. Phoenix and the LA Kings game four. LA out to an early one nothing lead in that game. Boy, they have dominated that series, haven't they? Up three, zip. By the mound, Kipnis throws him out two away. Off day for the Indians tomorrow, then back to work Tuesday when the Detroit Tigers come to town. That's right, tomorrow we got the uh, Matt Underwood golf tournament going on that is right in ashland yes sir looking forward to that you got to head down there tonight yeah. don't you the auction and yeah. get everything rolling yeah for tomorrow looking forward to another great event sold out field sold out and missed tell zap and the boys i said hello tonight i'll see him tomorrow <laughs> I'm sure they'll have you uh, in their crosshairs tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. I'm getting there at 9.59. <laughs> right before tea time? Yeah. You'll have something waiting for me. The 0-2 pitch. That's hit pretty well. Deep right center field. Chu is going to have it blow right back to him. And the Marlins go 1-2-3. We go to the bottom of the ninth, 5-1 Miami.
often adding 50 bucks to the gathering place. And our season total just over two grand. Great needs, great deeds, great clips. Indians down four. Bottom of the ninth. Carlos Santana, Michael Brantley, and Johnny Damon do up. Randy Choate staying on after working a scoreless eight. Mentioned last inning, this is not a multiple inning guy. Generally speaking, he is a matchup lefty, but the Indians have so many left-handed hitters that we're seeing managers yeah. stay with lefties if, if they don't have an abundance of lefties. So I told you the 28th time that a left-hander was the first one out of the bullpen to face the Indians lineup. They have Heath Bell up getting loose. And, I mean, you're right. With the dominant left-handed hitters in the Indians lineup, manager will use those lefties, and he'll use them back-to-back. Santana one for three with a base hit today. One and one to count. And a ground ball to third. Oh, it's picked it and kicked in foul territory by Dobbs. So the Indians will get their leadoff man aboard. And ruled an error on Dobbs, so the Indians have a runner aboard to start. Well, that's the bottom one of the play. Night. He broke in. I mean, now the only chance he had was to come in and make that play, and it just went off his glove. So that'll go as an error, but it's the first base runner. It's on board, so things can happen. And Michael Brantley takes a strike. Sails wide. And a weak ground ball to third. Dobbs goes to second. They erase Santana one away. That's going to bring up Johnny Damon, who is 0 for 3. Back in the seventh inning, Damon just missed, hitting a two-run homer. That would have put the Indians in the lead. Takes a strike. The pitch. Damon a little squibber up the third baseline. That's going to be a swing and bunt single. And the Indians have two on with one out. Marlins had one of those earlier in the game. Now the Indians have a two on with one out. Well, that couldn't have been placed any better. I mean, right down the line, they were going to get nobody. It's like a perfect bunt. So they have two men on. Ozzie Gian going to go make the change. You, you said it. With the error leading off that inning, Choate will leave. Heath Bell will be coming on when we come back. Tribe not out of it yet.
two on and one out in the ninth inning. Heath Bell on now. It uh, is a what? It is a safe situation. Oh, isn't yeah. It? Sure, sure is. is. He is four out of eight. It'll be Lopez and Kotchman, the scheduled hitters. Let's make it interesting. One more base runner. And you bring in that tying run to the plate. Jose Lopez doubled his last time up, drove in a run with a single in the fifth inning. Lopez has been the Indians best hitter in the series with four knocks. He hits a high fly ball to deep left. Coglin back on the track at the wall. He can't make the play. Brantley coming around third. He's going to score. Stopping at third is Damon into second with an RBI double is Jose Lopez. And he stays red hot. His third straight hit today. His second RBI of the ball game. And it's now a 5-2 game with the tying run coming to the plate. Boy, Lopez has had an afternoon, hasn't he? I mean, he didn't waste any time, jumped on that heater, drilled it off the wall in left field. He figures, I'm going to get a fastball. He did. That ball was tracking. As a base runner, you had to wait. You weren't sure where it was going to land, so Santana comes in to score. Damon to third base, and now the tying run is at the dish. And Casey Kochman at the plate, 0 for 1, came on as a pinch hitter and grounded out. And Heath Bell gets ahead with a quick strike. Kochman has been in a pretty good groove offensively, hitting just over 300 in his last 16 games. Down and in. Just four for 29, however, on the year with a runner in scoring position for Kochman. The 1-1. One, one. Banged foul. And he's down on the count of one and two. Shinsu Chu waits on deck. Runners at second and third with one out. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Tribe down five to two. Heath Bell ready with a one-two pitch. Down low and the count evens up. Bell has certainly had his problems already this year. He's blown a couple of key saves. And that's fouled out of play. Manny Acta hoping to see his club battle back here in the bottom of the ninth. This Sunday afternoon crowd. Hoping for some walk-off dramatics. Kochman calls time after Bell took too long to you get know, the sign. Just keep it rolling. Something that they have done before. They've had innings like this. Don't be a hero. Just get a base hit and keep the train moving for the next guy. This, it was all started by an error. He had third to start the inning. He fell ready with a 2-2. Right back up the middle. Backhanded by Murphy. His throw in time. They get Kochman at first. A run scores. And it's a 5-3 ball game, but now there are two down. Lopez goes to third on the play. I 
This ball was just not hit hard enough. They were able to cut it off. You're going to see on the backhanded side. Murphy makes the play, gets Kochman. That's two outs, and that's the Marlins love that. The Indians still have that tying run coming to the plate, and Shin Su Chu. And Chu is one for two with a couple of walks today. Bell delivers, and it's outside ball one. Swung on a miss, chased a high heater there. Right back to the screen. Lopez at third. Chew the tying run at the plate, but now he is down on the count of ball and two strikes. Outfield deep and a bit shading him the other way towards left. Twenty three thousand six hundred and eighty eight the attendance this afternoon for the series finale and the one two pitch is hit to left. Coughlin is there he'll make the catch and the Indians rally falls short here in the bottom of the ninth. So once again the Marlins who've had the Indians number over the years come to town and take two out of three to win the series as they take it by a final today of five to three. That drops the Indians out of 23 and 18 on the year. Miami will leave town 22 and 19. Winning pitcher Josh Johnson, he's now two and three, and the save to Heath Bell, his fifth on the year. Losing pitcher is Derek Lowe. Talk about your tough luck loser. And he drops to six and two on the season. Time now for our play of the game brought to you by KeyBank. Well, we go back to the fifth inning, and it, it was a play. It was a weird play. Chu hits the ball to first base. Marson, I don't know if he was thinking it was a base hit or whatever, but he ran way out of the line. It was called or ruled like interference. They completed the double play because he didn't slide. The intention wasn't there that he was going to do anything. He just got in the way and uh, did not allow Reyes uh, any room. Manny came out to argue that play, but it ended up going uh, a double play, and that ended the inning. They would have had runners at first and third with nobody out. So our play of the game brought to you by KeyBank, the home of relationship rewards. Earn reward points and redeem for gifts. So the Tribe falls by a final score of 5-3. to three. For those of you watching on Channel 3, stay tuned. Stanley Cup playoff action is next with Phoenix at the L.A. Kings. On STO, it's the Conrad's Post Game Show. For Rick Manning and Katie Witham, I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks for watching. 5-3, the Marlins a winner this afternoon here at Progressive Field.